So, reminder, it's, now, um, we're now going to talk about illusions that we've all been raised for years and years believing in. It's sometimes hard to give, uh, you know, to give some of those up. If you don't like what I'm saying, doze off but, uh, for a minute, but don't let go, okay? Some of it is going to be very controversial. Okay, that was my disclaimer. Oh, that's a bad start. Uh, right, um, so, so um, w w illusions, what, what's going on? The, the modern world we live in forces us to handle it in ways that are not very natural. Remember, we were not made for this, okay? We were, we were made for the jungle and the cave, okay? And in the jungle and the cave, you needed different skills, you needed different uh, ways where you can uh, survive, basically, okay? Uh, and when, you, when, you're, um, when you're navigating a world that you're not made for, you have to sort of make conversions, okay? So we learn to navigate this world in ways that is very, very different than how the world really is. I, I'll give you an example. The way we handle time, for example, is very, very different than the way we used to handle time in the cave years. Time wasn't that important for the hunter. The hunter would sit there for hours, no problem whatsoever. He would wait for the prey, and when the prey is there, you know, that's the time where he takes prompt action, okay? Uh, to navigate this world, we've become really, really good at it, okay? We've become good at it because we found skills that allows us to handle the steady state of the world we live in. The problem is, the world is not always in steady state. When you go off steady state, things go really berserk. So, I, I liken this to the example of being in a racetrack, okay? Uh, so imagine any one of us can take any car and go around a leisurely drive around a, a racetrack, right? You go, you're on the first gear, you're okay, you know, a little bit more, right? And you have the skills to handle the car within the racetrack. But if suddenly this racetrack is full of crazy drivers, and everyone is, is, is really zooming around you, and you have to make it to the finish line, otherwise you'll be crushed, okay? Your skills, without really understanding the G-forces on the car and how to oversteer and understeer and how to skid a little, you, you will not be able to survive that racetrack. You will do really, really badly when things go out of the ordinary, okay? So this is why the illusions are always okay. You can always live with them. You can always live with the skill set you have until things go wrong, until things go out of the ordinary, and then suddenly you're not skilled at handling that anymore. The other side of the illusions is a bit like a fish in the water, right? So, so they are so immersive that you don't really recognize them at all. You go to a fish and you say, how's the water today? The fish will say, what water? What are you talking about, right? We don't even, you know, there is, there is no water. I'm just surviving like every day. I don't even know what I'm in, okay? And, and our illusions are so immersive that we are in that situation. We don't even recognize them as illusions at all. So those six grand illusions, hmm, they submerge us in confusion. I'll let you read this. But um, the, the, uh, once you see them, you will actually feel a weight is lifted. I ask you to actually consider that moment if I manage to lift any one of them today, okay? You will feel a weight is lifted. You will feel like, whoa, that was hard handling this, okay? And happiness will become a little more often, I think. I'll start with the first one. But I have a confession to make. Um, I'm not a very sane person. I have voices in my head all the time. Okay? There is some weird guy talking to me all the time. Does that happen to you too? Okay, a guy or a girl? Okay, so let, let me ask this. Who here has ladies first? Let's start with the ladies. Do you have someone in your mind talking to you? Okay. Boys telling you things, ladies who didn't raise their hands. Are you totally quiet all the time or is someone talking here? Okay. For those who have someone talking, uh, is she one or two? Does she always agree with herself, or does she sometimes say, hey, we need to go right, no, 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 we need to go left, right? Uh, hey, I need to work hard tonight, no, I really need to go out and meet him. Does she does do that sometimes? Yep, not yes, 
Men, do you have a voice in your head? Someone talking to you all the time? Okay? Oh, those Zen people that are always meditating. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, let's, let's actually have a pull here, a survey. Who has a voice in his head? Someone talking to him in his head or her. Okay, those who are, have not raised their hands did not understand the question, okay? Uh, or are absolute liars, right? We all have someone in our head all the time. It's not one person. It's a voice that constantly tells you what to do, okay? The reason why you came here today is when you wake up in the morning, the voice said, man, it's the weekend. And then the voice said, no, 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 but this is important. And then the voice said, no, it's not. And then the voice said, okay, let's go. If it's bad, I will leave. Didn't that happen to you? <laughs> Good. Okay. So, uh, the, uh, the, oh, I forgot to say that. Oh, these are the six illusions. Read them quickly. We'll come to them in a minute. Right. Uh, so, the, illu the first illusion is what I call the illusion of thought. Okay? <laughs> that voice that's in our head, um, uh, the little voice in, our, in your head, as I call it, uh, is talking to you all the time. That little voice in your head is, um, is really in command, okay? It has the power to make you happy or unhappy. Did you notice that? It's, it is that little voice in your head, uh, in my head, that told me losing my sab but saving my wife was a good thing. That same little voice could have said, saving my wife but losing my sab is not as great, right? It's the same voice. If the voice had said, this is a horrible day, I loved that car, I don't care if my wife is safe, I would have ended up being very unhappy. Okay? Uh, the biggest myth around that voice in our head is who's talking? Who's talking? Do you, who, who do you think is that voice talking to you in your head? Say? Yourself, okay? Any other opinions, you know, ambitious, driven people? You're conscious. Uh, societal conventions and what you're expecting to do. That's why th this is what some of the tone it uses, but who is talking? No one is a very interesting one. No one's talking. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Your expectations is what it says, but who is talking? Your inner critic. That's a good name for it. There are other names, by the way, you know. Uh, Re religions will call it the companion, and you know, uh, in cartoons they have it as that angel and you know, and uh, and devil, one one talking in one ear and the other is talking to the other. Um, um, uh, Eckhart Tolle, which I think the world of calls it the thinker. Um, we had a hand at the end. Who's talking? Your mind. Your mind. What is your mind? What's a mind? A thinker. Okay. Uh, you can go a step further than that. Okay, so I'm going to make the biggest claim that you're going to uh, reject today. Uh, our, the, uh, the, 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 um, the West believes, I think, therefore I am. The, 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 the voice in my head is myself. This is me. Okay? I am talking to me. What if I told you it wasn't you? Okay, you're first going to frown on me, and then we're going to talk about it. Okay? We're gonna, th there are two ways we can go through this. I'll go through the more controversial way first and then through the more scientific way second. Okay? For you to understand if something is you or not, there are two tests you should take. One is what I call the test of perception and the other is the, the test of permanence. Okay? The test of perception is if I can see the lovely lady sitting in front of me, then she is not me. Okay? If I can observe something, then by definition, the object-subject relationship means that, I, that that thing is not me. I am not you know, the, this Mac, and I am not the camera. Is, does that make sense to you? Okay? If you can observe something, perception by definition means that what you observe is not you. Okay? Now, you can observe that voice. If it was you, why is it talking to you? You ever thought of that? Permanence is a more interesting one. Because sometimes that voice stops. What does that mean? When the voice stops, you cease to exist? No. The voice just stops talking. 
okay? And you, you continue to be the same. Do coma patients cease to exist? If you get that few moments of silence during meditation where your brain goes zee, do you cease to exist? Per perception and permanence are tests we're gonna use quite often, okay? Because truly the real question is, so there is a voice, I notice it, it's talking to me like a radio, but the radio is not me, and the radio host is not me. The reason it's talking to me is it's because it's trying to grab my attention. That's the philosophical side of this. And I know we're you know, a, a very driven scientific community, so we don't believe in that stuff. Uh, so let's believe in the real thing, okay? Te science basically says back in the 1930s, they realized that the, uh, when, when you have internal speech, there are movements in this, I don't know what's the English word of this. Uh, say again? Whatever, voice box, right? Uh, you, you get movements here, very tiny movements associated with the inner voice, okay? In a way that suggests that your inner voice truly is an internalization of your vocal uh, um, speech, okay? At, as young children, when we start to, to learn to speak, we start to speak and speak and speak, and like you go, hey, car, mommy, airplane, mommy, you know, um, toy, mommy, right? And then it becomes awkward, so we internalize that speech. We just keep it in our head. We look at things and we say, time, uh, you know, uh, uh, car mo, aeroplane mo. We don't talk to mommy anymore and we keep it in our brain, okay? T tests have actually shown that when you have inner speech, there are certain parts of your brain that are actually engaged. But the more interesting thing is that, so, uh, so I'm actually going to claim to you, believe it or not, that the voice is simply your brain, okay? And I know that this sounds really odd, because, but I am my brain. No, you're not your brain. You're not your lungs either, okay? Your lungs are there to extract CO2 out of your body, put it out in the open air, and take O2 into your body and put it into your blood. It's an organ, piece of meat, it does a function, and the function is performed, a biological function. It is not you. You will never tell yourself that you're your in intestines. You're not, right? Uh, bad function. Uh, now, you, you, your brain is there to give you ideas. It's a bit of a difficult function to understand because it doesn't have a physical, biological character to it, but it, what, what it does there, it is basically a generator of thought. It, inter it interprets all of your senses into thoughts and gives them to you, in your, you know, for you to consider, really. Okay? It's like, okay, car coming at very fast speed. If I cross the road now, by the way, I've seen someone being squished hey, let's not cross the road, okay? And the decision, by the way, for you to cross the road or not is still up to you. Your brain can give you those things and you could be suicidal today and so you step in front of the car, right? Uh, now, there has been studies that break uh, a brain process down into three types of thought, okay? There is what we call the insightful thinking, right? Insightful thinking is when we give you a problem to solve. When we give you a, a problem to solve, it happens in two sides of your right side of the brain. Part of it happens ha here in the back where the problem solving actually takes place. And then up to eight seconds before you actually realize what the answer is, another part of your brain at the front of your right side lights up, okay? And that's when you really know the answer. So it's, you know, it solves the, uh, the, the problem in batch and then gives you the answer uh, up to eight seconds later. But it happens on the right side of the brain. Uh, I, that study was done by MIT. There was another study done by uh, the University of Toronto that is really eye-opening. So they got two groups of, uh, of, um, of test um, uh, participants, and they uh, had, them, um, had, ha had one uh, group uh, practice meditation for eight weeks. So they were a lot more present. They were in uh, the, um, what we call the um, ex experiential uh, thinking stage. So, so they were looking at the world as it is and experiencing it, okay? Not judging it, not going through incessant thought of assessing it, okay? And they found that their, uh, um, um, their, the, the, the process happened, uh, again, on the right side of the brain, on the front side, and in, on, on the insula. And this is where uh, most of the experiential thought happens. So while you're with me now listening to, our, to, to, to my speech, you're actually using those parts of your brain. You're present, you're focused, you're in there. 
The other group that didn't go through eight uh, uh, weeks of meditation were just in constant incessant thought. Okay? And those who were uh, you know, in incessant thought had all of the incessant thought happen in the middle of their brain, middle parts of middle regions of the brain. Okay? Uh, and, and this is measurable. You can easily see how those parts of your brain are lighting up. Okay? Now, with, when your brain behaves that way, uh, and we, you, you know, we, we constantly get caught in incessant thought, and you know what happens, those parts of the brain grow because you're using them a lot. Right? So more and more and more, those parts of the brain generate more incessant thought. Right? The, while, while this study on one side tells you the difference between being present uh, or being thoughtful and being incessantly thinking and caught up in your thoughts, it also serves as a, as a very clear proof that all of the speech happening in your head truly is just a brain function. Okay? It's just a machine that is supposed to give you thoughts. So in reality, the idea of I think, therefore I am should be reversed into I am, therefore I think. Okay? The truth of the matter is that the illusion is centered around this voice is me. Okay? And so I have to do what it tells me. Right? But that's absolutely not true. And that's the biggest reason for unhappiness that has ever faced mankind. That this voice is me, this voice is telling me that I am a bad person, then I need to feel guilty. I mean, I'm, I don't pick on ladies, but ladies are very good sometimes with that. You would be gorgeous. You look in the mirror, and there is this little thought, little dot here, okay? And then your brain will say, you're ugly. Why? Because it sees that one dot, and it produces a thought, okay? And the thought, actually, I'll tell you in a minute why it happens that way. The thought is just simply saying, hey, by the way, did you notice that dot? Really, this was the, supposed to be the thought, but it delivers it in a way. And because it's, it, you believe that this voice is you, you relate so strongly to that thought. Okay? As a matter of fact, it shouldn't be I am, therefore I think. It should be I am, therefore my brain thinks. Okay? Silence. What does that mean? Shout now or forever hold your peace. Does this make sense to you? Good. If, you, if this makes sense to you, your life has forever changed, okay? Because you know what? That's what we engineers do. That's what we professionals do, okay? We tell our brains what to do. And I'll tell you a lot of, of, of ways you can do that. Now, if you think a naughty thought, does that make you a naughty person? I see heads shaking that way, right? However, if the voice is you, and the voice thinks a, na a naughty thought, you would say, I am naughty, because I'm thinking a naughty thought. That's absolutely not true. If you think a naughty thought, you're simply being presented a thought that is one of a million thoughts that can happen today, okay, which your brain as a biological or organ has a, a, you know, a duty of offering you. Okay? I can either do this, go left, and be a nice person, or I can go right and be a little naughty. These are just thoughts for you, Mr. Human, to explore. My job as a brain is to offer you those thoughts. Once you disconnect between you and your brain, and really view your brain just like your foot, it's there for a function, your life will never be the same. Why does it think? I think if you understand this, a lot of things will be different. Okay? Why does your brain think? Why is it narrating the world around you so much? Why, is, why does it not, never stop? What's the job description? What is this organ there for? We know that your heart is there to pump blood around your body. Right? That's a very clear job description. Is that clear? What's the job description of your brain? Shout one out. To analyze things? Problem solving. I want the core mission. Hmm? To what? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. To think. Okay, that was easy. I could have guessed that. To help you survive. That's the function. Okay. So, so your brain is there to help you survive, right? The only function where we that we had this machine for, as I said, is to coordinate all of those sensory perceptions and make you take decisions that ensures your survival, okay? 
In the jungle, it's actually very simple decisions. Hey, Mo, there is a tiger on the left. We need to run. Okay? Simple. You go like, yeah, run. It tells your feet, your legs, your muscles, you're running. Okay? Simple as that, right? Uh, in the modern world, survival is very different. So what do we do? We go into the little dot on our forehead, and we go into, oh, but he told me this. Oh, but she told me that. Oh, but the job is not going to be perfect. Oh, but the proposal is not amazing. Okay? And you go through all of that incessant thought all the time. I'll come back to the, to the job description in, in, in depth later, but just keep that in mind for a few minutes. Now, actually, this concept is going to end now, because if you're convinced, then all we really need to do is to understand how do you stop that thing from thinking bad thoughts. Okay? And I'm going to ask you to consider four techniques. And that would probably be the fastest time I've ever covered this. One of them is what I call OD. No, not overdose. Uh, which is basically observe the dialogue. Okay? What does that mean? You have that machine in your head talking to you all the time. We've established that this machine is not you. Okay? So, first thing you want to do is observe it. And I'm going to ask you to do that for the coming few days. Right? Every time it, ta it talks to you, say, oh, okay, it's you, brain. I see what you're doing here. You're giving me a thought to consider. Oh, thank you for the thought. Now go fly a kite. Okay? I just want you to let go of that thought. Give me another one. Right? So meditation actually tells you to do that. I just want you to observe the thoughts as they come along. Hmm? And just observe the dialogue. And I, it will be a lot of fun, by the way. You're, you, when you're stuck in a commute from now on, it will be a ton of fun. Because you sit there, you have your own little movie in your head. You know, someone's talking all the time, and you're like, yeah, entertaining. Like you're sitting in the cinema, right? When you sit in the cinema, I, I, always, I always use the example of Seinfeld. You guys are very young, so anyone knows Seinfeld? Oh, great audience, great audience, right? So, uh, so Seinfeld was our top comedy show of my lifetime, and so basically it was a show about nothing, okay? The whole idea was that the show was about nothing. So George would say something, and then, you know, Jerry would answer with something, and, you know, Kramer would walk in and say something, and... You don't interfere, you don't tell Kramer, hey, 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 no, no, this is not you, you, what you're supposed to say. You don't engage in the dialogue, you just watch the dialogue, right? And you're entertained by it. Do that on every commute from now on. Just observe what's going on in your, in your brain. My only ask of you is every time it tells you a thought, or a bad thought specifically, just say, okay, I observe what you're doing here. I know you're not me, you're just my brain, okay? The second one is OD squared, okay? So uh, OD squared is sometimes some of those thoughts are harder to let go of, okay? Sometimes some of those thoughts will actually em engage an emotion, a serious emotion. So the taxi driver was rude, would engage anger, okay? I'm not asking you to do anything about it, just observe it. It's like, okay, I thought about the taxi driver, I felt angry, I can see that this related to that, let go. Observe the drama, I call it, okay? So you observe the drama that your thoughts generate. And by the way, that drama is the cause of every, uh, um, you know, uh, unhappiness you've ever felt. L literally, every single unhappiness you've ever felt is because your brain produced a thought and the thought produced a drama, okay? Do that as long as you want, okay? By the way, your, your life will never be the same. Okay? You, will, you, will, you will forget what we spoke about today in a week's time. Okay? You will listen to your brain again. You will again think that I think, therefore I am, that the, my brain is me. But every now and then, it will pop up in your brain that, hey, but that's not me talking. I don't need to listen to this guy or this girl. Okay? And the more often you will do that, the more often you will disconnect between that misery machine and who you really are. Okay? Now, the next one is my favorite. I call that, get me a better thought. Right? We'll do, for that, we'll do a simple exercise, a 30-second exercise. So, those who are writing things, look up. Okay? We're going to do a 30-second exercise. Do as the screen tells you. 
Can you do that for me? Ready? Go. Good. Thank you. All right. Uh, what did you do here? You told your brain exactly what to do. Did it say no? OK, well, you know, I saw one person here when we said, look up, uh, look here first. He spoke to the person next to him. Very stubborn brain. Uh, OK. Uh, but yeah, if he had made up his mind, he would have actually looked up here, right? Uh, but you see, you can tell your brain what to do. This is not science. Is that clear? So if you can tell your brain what to do, if you can tell your brain what to think of, you can always tell your brain to, so of course, so now you know who's the boss, right? Who's the boss? You or your brain, by the way. Who's the boss? You are the boss. You tell your brain to do things, and your brain does them. So if that's the case, you should tell your brain to get you a better thought. Now, there is a simple truth to everything we ever deal with, that half of it is, is, is full and half of it is empty. Nothing is all good and nothing is all bad. Okay? You can sit in this room and say, chairs are too close together. I hate my life, okay? That's half of the truth, okay? The other half of the truth is bold guy entertaining. Other half of the truth, right? You can focus on this or you can focus on that. You understand this? Now, get me a better thought is simply to tell your brain to find the, good, the full half of the glass. Every glass is half full, okay? Just constantly tell your brain, get me a better thought, right? So my brain will tell me, Look, your you know, work is, is ugly, you know, people are not moving as fast as we want them to, and I would say, get me a better thought. I don't like this, right? And it would say, ah, you know, the commute is too far. Hey, I said a better thought. And if you insist, your brain will start to say, yeah, but the people you're dealing with are super cool. And by the way, but uh, some of them are, uh, you know, awkward. No, no, I said a better thought. And if you keep telling your brain, it will actually get you a better thought, okay? I don't want to spend time for you to do that now, but please, after you, after you learn to observe the dialogue and observe the drama, learn to interrupt the dialogue and drama by simply saying, I don't like this thought, get me a better thought. Simple, very doable, will change your life. The one I prefer even more, so when you tell your brain to get you a better thought, you're really telling your brain to go out there and continue to think, but think in the positive, okay? My absolute favorite is to tell, you, to tell your brain to completely shut up. So I, I attended a, um, <coughs> a training session by a, um, the author of uh, Life DYI, do it yourself, yeah, uh, who is a personal trainer, trains very famous um, uh, uh, you know, uh, athletes, and one of his athletes basically was talking about how he has that duck quacking in his head all the time, that his brain is like literally quacking all the time, okay? And so he, his advice to, to, to his, uh, um, you, know, you know, person he was training was shut the duck up, right? If you shut the duck up, you will perform, right? Now that is actually quite difficult. That's a very difficult thing to ask you to try and find ways where you, actually, where you completely stop thinking. But there is a technique. Okay, I'm going to ask you now to count the stars that appear on the screen while you read the letters of the sentence backwards. This is a difficult task. I'm going to ask you to count the stars that appear on the screen while you read the letters backwards. So you'll go S, D, R, A, W, A, K, A, and so on, right? But you're going to have to do that out loud. Ready? Count. Okay, do we need to continue? <laughs> how, how many stars? <laughs> did you read? Did you, did you, 22 or 26 or 25? Come on, who, who, how many stars? And, and those who counted the stars, did you read the letter backwards? Yeah. No, you cheated. <laughs> the genius that said yes, who? Oh, I, oh yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, <laughs> 
It's the same person that spoke to the person next to him. So, uh, okay. Uh, right. Now, this is the biggest loophole in your brain, okay? Your brain, as brilliant as it is, it's actually today faster than the, the biggest supercomputer we have on the, on the planet, right? It's a super processing power, okay? This little machine is the smartest computer on the face of the planet. As a matter of fact, I think until a few years ago, it had more nodes in it than the entire internet, uh, the neurons. Uh, now, that machine, unfortunately, is a serial processor. It can only do one thing at a time. Even though, of course, for ladies more than men, you actually tend to believe that it's doing a million things at the same time, a million thoughts in your brain all the time, okay? Men normally have one thought, football, or like other thoughts, right? Uh, <laughs> but still, it is one thought at a time, okay? As you switch between all of those thoughts, you're literally switching between them. You're focusing on one, then letting it go, then focusing on the next, then letting it go, and so on. It's a serial processor, okay? So if you want to shut it up, you just give it one thing that is harmless to think about, okay? And what I normally do is I would ask you to look at the, uh, okay, let's start to observe things. Let's stay quiet for a second, please. Listen to the voices. Did you hear that? Okay. Now, let's focus on the... Um, can you look at the, the brick wall there? Start to recognize the patterns of every brick. Can you see that? Okay. Look at this wooden thing here. Can you see the grain on the wood going sideways? Can you see the different colors? I mean, those in the back, maybe you want to look at the brick wall there. Okay. It doesn't matter what you look at. Okay? But this is experiential. When you're, when you're experiencing the world around you, you're noticing simple things like the sounds, the smells, the ambient light, the fact that there is a grain in the concrete, you know. Whatever it is that you're experiencing is that single task you give to your processor. Once you give your processor, uh, by the way, I should have asked you, when I asked you to observe the, uh, you know, the grain or, or to listen to the voices, were you thinking about anything? When you paid attention truly to listen to the voices, your brain went total silence. Okay? Now, this is what they call meditation. But I actually don't believe that meditation should be in the meditation room. You shouldn't wait until 7 p.m., then drive for half an hour, then go to your you know, yoga class, and then meditate for two and a half, uh, you know, for 25 minutes, and then after 25 minutes, you end up going out of the class totally in incessant thought again. Okay? So you can switch it off for 25 minutes. Meditation as a practice should teach you to be able to do this all the time. This is a lifestyle, okay? And a lifestyle that basically, basically allows you to Shut the duck up. Like, seriously, you're too noisy here. I don't want, I don't want all of those thoughts. Okay? As, a, as a confident manager, sometimes people come into my room and I say, that's it. I don't want to see your slides. I've made up my mind. I don't want this noise. Okay? Now, that, you're the boss. Your brain keeps talking as long as you let it talk. Sometimes it's like, you know what? I just don't want this. Look at the rose, look at the grain of wood, look at anything around you, look for the smells. The smells drive me crazy because then you start to get the coffee that is in the distance, you get that woohoo, lovely perfume passing by. You know, it's really, really an interesting experience. And once you do that, it shuts up completely. Okay? I know this was a very quick concept. I will tell you in one word that this will change your life. Right? The, 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 the voice in your head is not you. Don't let it ever come and, and lead you again, okay? So shut it up, and these are my four techniques. So if you're not your brain, that's a very big hole in our belief. Any questions, by the way? Any comments? Yes. That's a very interesting question. So if, you know, so if you're telling your brain to do things, where do you generate the ideas to do that? I don't know the answer to that, okay? I simply think that there is a way for you to communicate with that machine 
And when you communicate with that machine, unfortunately, because we're coming to that in a minute, because we're physical machines, this machine is a physical machine, you have to communicate with it in the physical. So you use physical commands to execute on the physical machine. But, and and those, those happen in your brain, okay? Your brain is the way that we, the real we, uh, communicate to this avatar. Not really. I think that's part, your, your brain is functioning, and then you say, stop. Who's you? We'll come that, to that in a minute. Is, is that perhaps the mind telling the brain? I don't know what the mind is. The mind is a brand name that I don't understand. OK. Maybe didn't answer your question. That's why we're going to have a lot of interesting conversations today. <laughs>